there, everybody. I'm the Almighty Zentaco, and I'm here bringing you another tutorial for Click Team Fusion 2.5. Uh, this time, we're going to be doing a tutorial on projectiles, how to shoot things. We've got two different projectiles lined up. One is just a basic projectile that's going to shoot left and right along a straight path. The second one is a little more complicated. It's going to be an arc, such as you throw it, it goes kind of up, comes back down. So. With that in mind, let's get started. Uh, I changed all the graphics of our platform game since last time. I went in on uh, Inkscape and added a bunch of stuff. Here, let me show you real quick. We got this sort of Plague Doctor guy here. He can move around and jump. Add some backgrounds. But uh, yeah, that's all he can do is jump. So let's close this. <clears throat> OK, so the first thing we need to do is create a new object. This is going to be our projectile. And for this one, we have an ax. I made some art for this. Previously, I'm going to import it, so we're going to call this projectile axe. Double click on our active object, we're going to import the axe. Uh, we're going to do the hotspot, it's going to be center, not center of mass. Obviously, you guys won't have this axe, it's fine, you can have it. You, your projectile can be whatever you want, doesn't matter. So the axe is kind of big, we're going to probably shrink that through code. Let's put that over here. Let's go into the event editor, <clears throat> drop our comment, and this is going to be axe projectile. <clears throat> Excuse me, thirsty. All right, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna set this up with the Z button because we're using X for jump. You can use any button you want for your projectile. So we're gonna say the keyboard upon pressing a key Z. Uh, what are we going to do? We are going to, when you press Z, we want to go to our uh, player object, right click there, and we're going to have him do something called launch an object right here. <clears throat> and we pick the object from our, uh, from our collection of objects here. So we're going to launch the projectile X, click on it. Speed of 100 is fine. We're going to use the direction of the player object. That way it'll launch in the direction the player is facing. So let's give that a test. There we go. Shoots axes. As you can see, that's, it shoots them both left and right. Uh, yeah, it looks really dumb. So we're going to need to do a little work on this. But not a big deal. So what, we, what we're going to do this time, uh, something we haven't done yet, is to go into the behaviors. Objects have something called behaviors, which is essentially their own event editor that is local to that object. So if you put that object in another frame, it'll carry this code over with it. It's a little difficult to uh, point to other objects with, with, this, with the uh, behaviors. Sometimes it completely messes up, so I don't really recommend doing that. Unless you, uh, you have experience with this program, it can get a little complicated. But it's something you can do. Sometimes it'll glitch out if you do that, so be careful. So to add a behavior, click on Events. Under Behaviors, you click New. You get some ellipses, click on the ellipses and click edit. That opens up our own personal little event editor for this axe object. So what we're going to do <clears throat> is we want to do a couple things. We want the axe to be smaller. Okay, so right now we're going to say always to shrink the axe. We're going to click on the axe, scale angle. We're going to set the scale to, let's say, 0 0.5, making it exactly half as big. Uh, we'll use 1 for maximum quality. So he's gonna, it'll shrink it as soon as it gets launched, it'll, it'll shrink. Uh, then we're gonna spin it. So to do that, hmm, wait a second. Let me check this real quick. Yeah, we're gonna add another direction to this object. This, this might be necessary. So now we have a left and right direction for our X object. Go back into the editor. Okay, we're gonna say <clears throat> if the object is facing right, then we are going to set the angle, go down to the current object list and grab the X. We're going to get the current angle. Uh, now on angles, uh, clockwise, you need to uh, subtract and counterclockwise you add. That seems counterintuitive, but that's the way it is. So, so we're gonna need to constantly, while it's facing right, we want it to move clockwise. So we need to subtract, we'll say 10. Set that to one, copy our event, drop it down here, double click and change the direction to the left, and edit this so that it will turn the other way. So that's gonna be, need to be an addition, one as well, get good quality on that, and let's test it out. 
So now the axe is smaller and it spins. Pew, pew, pew. That's pretty cool. Yep, spins the right direction depending on where you're facing. Perfect. Now you'll notice there's a problem. Um, they don't, I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be a problem if you want your game to be this way, but we don't want this. The axe just goes through the geometry. We want our axe to hit geometry and stop. As well as, if you look at up here in the top left, there's an object counter. Uh, it's not destroying the objects when they leave the screen. It'll destroy them when they get off the frame over here. But they're going to travel the length of our frame this way. And they're going to just kind of clutter up our RAM. So we need to clean that up and get rid of them as they get off the screen. So we're going to do that here. <clears throat> so first, let's let's uh, let's add the collision. So, if uh, the axe collides with a backdrop, we're going to need to destroy it. Let's test that out. Okay, it's it's now it's better, but we're going to need to add an effect to make that look, uh, you know, attractive because that looks pretty bad. We're also going to find out if the axe. Uh, Position. Someone's calling me. Let me <clears throat> leave me alone, Joel. I'm busy, buddy. All right. Uh, what was I doing? Test test position of axe. Uh, if it's no, 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 no. What am I doing? I totally forgot. This that phone call confused me. Uh, oh, is it getting close to the window's edge? Saying so if it's getting within negative one of the window's edge, we're going to destroy it. That should work. Give that a test. Okay. Yeah, if you look at, if you look up here, our objects are being destroyed as soon as they get within negative one of the of the edge. So <clears throat> it'll keep them from cluttering up our RAM. So now we're cleaning up our objects. Okay, we need to go back to our object because we're going to add a, an explosion effect. So it looks better when it hits the backdrop. So when it collides with the backdrop, we're going to go to click it or create an, a new object. Right click on that, create an object. Now I've already imported these, so we need to import the object of the uh, <clears throat> of the effect. And this one I just it's called active. Click on that. We need to set it relative to our axe. There we go. Let's see what happens. Yep. Okay, now I mean, that looks pretty good, but um, I need to explain something to you. The reason that works, it, we, I have a little code listed, nestled inside of my explosion object. Let's call that FX explosion. So if we take a look at this, we ask whenever the animation stopped is over. Stopped is the only animation I have for this. It's just two frames of an explosion getting bigger. Uh, whenever animation stopped is over, we're destroying it. Otherwise, it'll get to the last frame and just sit there. We don't want that to happen, so that's been cleaned up. So now we have our axe. Let's make sure everything works. Boom, boom. And we can add sound effects to this later. But for now, this is fine. It looks kind of cool. Shoots an axe. <clears throat> now we want to give our create another projectile. This time it's going to be a potion. And it's a potion he tosses in an arc. So let's insert our object. It's an active object. Double click on it. I'm going to import my picture that I drew previously. It's called Potion. Center. And there it is. <clears throat> this is also going to need two directions. You'll see in a second why that is. All right. Now let's say, let's have this work. Uh, we'll, we'll fire our, our Potion by holding down. So repeat while, while key is pressed down and also pressing Z. That way we have the same key for firing, but there's a little combination. Uh, now we need to add, we need to do something to Z though to, for the X. Uh, we have to add another event and we need to negate repeat while down arrow is pressed. Otherwise you will both throw an X and a potion when you hold down and press Z. So this way you will just do one or the other. So repeat while down arrow is pressed, and upon pressing Z, what we want to do is create a new object. We're going to create the, I didn't name it, the potion. It's called active. We're going to create it relative to our player object. Bam. Uh, and then we want to, as soon as it's created, we want to set its direction. 
And if you click on the bottom right, there's a calculate direction. It'll, it'll bring up an expression editor. So we're going to grab the direction from our player object, which is under animation. Current directional value. So what that does is as soon as it gets created, <coughs> it puts the direction of our uh, potion to the direction of the player. Let's change the name of that. Projectile potion. Okay, we need to go in to our behavior, add a new behavior to our potion. Uh, what are we doing? We need it, to, oh wait, hold on. Forget this, go back out. We need to add some variables. So if you click on the AZ under the properties tab, <coughs> there are variables we can add. So click new twice, we're gonna need two variables. We're gonna need X speed and we're gonna need Y speed. Let's set the Y speed to negative five. Set the, set the X speed rather to five. Uh, you'll see why we're doing this in a second. Okay, now we need to add a behavior. So, we're gonna need to know which direction this is facing. Compared to the direction of the projectile potion, if it is facing right, we are going to spin it to the right like we did last time. So set the, set the angle to its current angle. Uh, minus 10. And we're gonna copy this a bit. We're gonna edit it so we can do the inverse. Edit this and it's going to be positive 10. Let's test it and see if we did that right. Okay, <laughs> whoops, I need to shrink it. So yeah, it, it is spinning the right way. Right now we have these awesome gyrating spinning potions that are way too big. Okay. You know, these potions are probably look better if I give them a white outline instead of a black outline. I didn't think about that. The black outline's a little dark. All right, so um, repeat while down is pressed upon pressing C. So this is when we fire it. Let's set the scale of the object to 0 0.5, making it half as big. Okay, go back into the behaviors. Uh, while it's facing right, no, we need to, okay, while it's facing right, hold on, let me look at the object real quick. Okay, so our X speed is five. That means or we need to add in always real quick. What we're gonna do here is update the position of our object. So we're always going to change the position, the X coordinate to its current X coordinate plus, and we're going to values and we're grabbing the X speed. So we're always going to move it along the X path by the X speed. Okay, now the problem with that is that the X speed is five, which is always positive. So if we are facing left, it's going to go right. So to fix that, whenever we're facing left, we need to set X speed. I feel like I'm doing this wrong. Set the X speed to the absolute value of X speed. I need a parenthesis there. Excellent value of x speed times a negative one. That will, that should invert it while it's facing left. Let's see what that does. Yep, that works. Okay, so we got projectile shooting to the right and projectile shooting to the left. Uh, if you, I need to explain that though so you guys don't get confused. Sorry, I'm really bad at teaching things. I apologize. Um, so what we did here is we used the absolute function. Absolute returns a number, whatever's in the parentheses here. Absolutely, that means it'll get rid of any negatives or positives. So that way, if, if x speed gets changed to a negative, it doesn't care. It'll, it'll say, if it's negative one, it'll just say it's one. And so it'll get one and it'll multiply it by negative one. Uh, meaning that otherwise, if you, you've, you know, obviously, if you know math, if you multiply a negative one by negative one, you'll get a positive, meaning that, you know, depending on how this, this event triggered, it could actually fire right when we want to fire left. Hopefully that makes sense.
Okay, now we need to set the arc. So under the, oops, I'll uh, go back to our object here, to the behavior. Under the always tab, we want to always set the position, the y coordinate, to the y coordinate plus y speed. Now, y speed is negative 5. So that's going to be sending it upward, which is why we want to start it going up and we want to bring it back down. So we need to constantly be changing the y speed. So on, again, always alterable value set y speed. to y speed plus 0 0.1, I suppose. Let's give that a look and see if I jacked anything up. Yep, there it goes, got an arc. Now it kind of shoots out a little far. Maybe you want to go further up. If you want to, to go further up instead of down, we need to have a, uh, a bigger number for our default y speed. Right now it's negative five. You could set it to you know negative 10, let's do negative eight. Let's give that a try. And also, I this object is flying onto the screen. I don't know if you guys saw that. That's because we have it being created at start. So we need to make sure it's not there at the start. Same with this here. The reason is that that's getting destroyed. Okay, so now we need to destroy this object when it collides with the backdrop. So collisions, the backdrop, destroy it create an object. This is going to be our explosion object for importing another explosion object I have for this particular object relative to <coughs> our potion. Bam. Uh, and then we're destroying it. So create it first, then destroy. Now let's see if that works. Whoa, that's boom. That was really, really high though. I need to, yeah, well, I think negative five was much better. Let's do negative five again. Negative five. Yep, as you can see, we have two different types of projectiles now. We have our axe, which works as intended, and we have our potion. And just like uh, just like the other FX item, the or, uh, yeah object, the explosion for the potion has a certain number of frames and we have a behavior inside of it that destroys it when the animation stopped is over. That way it doesn't just stay on the screen. So that should be everything you guys need to know about uh, projectiles for these two different types of projectiles. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try to get back to them for you uh, and explain anything I, I didn't really explain properly if there was any such thing. And if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.